Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Africa Sports in the Ivory Coast where we are trying to build a nation, build the nation of the Ivory Coast to turn them into the greatest footballing nation not only in Africa but on the entire planet Earth. We are in January and we've actually lost our first game of the season. Yep, yep, it's happened. The last game of December we lost. So in between episodes, we have played two further matches and we've done not good, to be fair. We've drawn with ASI or maybe ASL Diab... Ab, 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 something or others. They were actually something like 16th at the time. They were way, way down the table at the time. We drew 1-1. Alozi with the goal in this one and then AS Tanda we lose we lose 2-0 and I'm blaming the fact that our main goalkeeper is out injured and we had to play Christian Drogba he's played twice now and conceded seven as it is January the transfer window is open as well we have signed Guy Silla from IFER who I believe are one of the maybe like a third division side in the Ivory Coast they were they were like a youth affiliate side so they basically just pump out lots of children and yeah Guy Silla has joined us free transfer I think think he might be good. My scouts thought he was good, but my coaches don't believe so. I'm also training him up to be a centre-back. And another thing to talk about before we play our first match of the episode, Serafin Aka is leaving the club. Pretty much every one of our players was on a one-year deal, and half of them don't want to sign new contracts, and Aka has signed a new deal, or a different deal, sorry, with Stad Abdejan, who are also an Ivorian Premier League side, but yeah, Aka's off which is a bit annoying. All of the players I have highlighted there, their contracts expire at the end of the season. So we do need to offer some new deals to some people. We do have some players who literally aren't getting paid anything, which does surprise me. Alozi, I feel like, should be getting paid something. And then if we go, okay, we'll give you some money. He, do he doesn't want to. So we're going to lose half of our squad at the end of the season, which is maybe not a bad thing. Despite the fact that we didn't have a particularly good couple of matches, we are still top of the table. We are two points clear of today's opponents, FC San Pedro. We are we, we need to start winning again. We need to start winning again. Hopefully we can do that. San Pedro are obviously a very good side. We're, we're a good side. I'd like to think we're a good side. So we have a little bit of an injury problem going on. As you can see there, Mohamed Kabane is our number one goalkeeper. He's out injured one to four days, so he's going to miss this match, but he will be hopefully back for the next one. Stevens Coffey, our, one of our top scorers, is also out for three to four weeks, which isn't ideal either. Also, Bakri Kone is he's slightly injured too. So yeah, we, we're missing a few players here. Are they missing anyone important? Krep and Kwasi, he's not bad, is he? And Pakome Agboke is also missing. He's also... He's not bad. I quite like him. Do we need him? I mean, we can sign... We're not the only club who have contract problems. We can just go around and sign loads of players. Anyway, let's get in to the starting 11s. The starting lineup then for the FC San Pedro game. It will be Kanate in goal. He has come in because of Drogba being awful and our main goalkeeper currently being out injured. It's going to be Richard, Kuraku, Kayute, Botti and Meieri as the back four. Kayute is the youngster, the young central defender who we've signed. He's not really played a lot of football, so he's actually going to break his way into the team because basically, if Aka is leaving, I don't care about him anymore. Kayate, that's where my focus is going to go. And Armand Botti, I think we had a look at before. He just wants some first-team football, so we're going to give it to him. He's going to be out of contract at the end of the year. In the middle of the pitch will be Diara Suba Zazua and Kouaku, Axel Kouaku that is, Diallo, Alozi and another Kouaku will be our striker. We've got three of them today, we are playing three of the Kouakus. There's only one more and he's not that good, so, you know, we, we, we're playing the good ones. Now obviously I'd love to win the league, I'd love to win the league on our first chance and our first opportunity, but we're not really good enough to win the league and I wasn't expecting to win the league. If we can get into the Champions League that might speed things up. But if we don't, it's not the end of the world. We've got a potentially early chance going our way. And Frank Kuaku has put the ball in the back of the net. Piccolo with the goal. We're one up against FC San Pedro. This is going to be a big three points. Whoever takes it, this is a very big three points. Because if we lose, San Pedro will go ahead of us. If we win, we go five points clear at the top of the table. There is obviously this highlight that has started straight after the goal. Richie Kouaku hits the ball forward, but it's coming straight back towards us. Silla in the centre circle for San Pedro. Alua 
forward to Diamande, and now Zan B across right hand side is Ngessen. There's lots of Ngessens playing in the Ivory Coast. Karaku tries to get the ball, can't manage it. Koulibaly's there. Mayeri managed to somehow scuff the ball away, and we managed to survive that a little bit of a scary moment. I've just realised, I think this is the halfway point of the season. I'm pretty sure we are literally halfway through the season right now as it stands. Well, half time then. Not the most exciting game of football, but we do have the lead thanks to Frank Kuaku. Do we want to do any changes at half time? We need to try and fix that team talk. Didn't that didn't didn't really fix it, did it? We need to possibly look at Zazua coming off because he's on a 6.5. Also, Axel Kuaku's not having a particularly good game. Do we bring back on? I oh, don't have him on the bench. Our, our youngster, I don't have him on the bench. He was suspended, which is why Kawaku was playing. And now I'm regretting the playing Kawaku. We don't we don't have any central midfielders. Right, well, we'll just stick him with that then. If you're new here, you'll soon learn that I never pick my subs bench. I just ask the assistant to do it. Occasionally, I'll put a player on there, but most of the time I don't bother. Koulibaly with a free kick for San Pedro. Back post. The ball has managed to somehow find its way in the back of the net. Banfasilla with the goal. It's 1-1. One, one. That's not good. That is not good. It's, of course it's his first senior goal, even though he's got two goals this season. How is that his first senior goal? They've had one shot on target. Let's give him a get creative, because we are not doing particularly well in the middle of the pitch. Right, 15 minutes left to play. Zazu has come back into this game. We are going to do... Bakary Kone? Sure. You could be a Mazar. To be fair, he's good enough. He's good enough to play pretty much anyway. He's our best player. He's going to play as a central midfielder. We're also going to do Diallo off for Utara, who is a fullback. He's going to play as a right winger. And that's probably it. We've got 15 minutes left to play. I'd love to see Bakary Kone score a goal. He is slightly injured, though. Final five minutes of the game. Not a lot has happened in this match at all, has it? It's looking like it is going to be points shared between the two top sides, which is not good. I would have loved to have won that game. Unfortunately, we only pick up the solitary point. We weren't very good in that match. If I'm honest, we weren't very good in that match. And I don't think San Pedro were either. Although apparently my assistant manager says they were excellent. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll just nod and agree with that one. Well, no changes at the top of the table. We're obviously still in first place. Two points clear of SC San Pedro. SC Gagnoa drop points against AFA de Jekinu, which means there is now a four-point gap between second and third. It's starting to look like a two-horse race, but we are still only halfway through the season, so plenty more football to go. Next up, then, we're going to go forward to the end of January, so it is going to be SO Army. I assume that's how you'd pronounce it, because that's how I'm pronouncing it. So we've got just two Premier League matches to play. We've also got AS Denguele and Stella Club in the two cup competitions. We're almost in an Ivorian League Cup semi-final. That's not bad. Don't worry, everybody. We are back to winning ways. We have played four matches in between. We've won four matches. Also, the transfer window has closed. A bit of business has happened. Most of it is leaving the club, though. We will start with the transfer business. Actually, the only business is people leaving the club. Frank Erie, who is our central midfielder, who was formerly of Circle Bruges and Monaco, has gone out on loan to Patro Eisden, who I believe are a second division side in the Ivory Coast. Hopefully, he's just going to play every single match between now and the end of the season down in the second division. And the oldest player in our squad, Serge Seri Dogo, has also left the club, signing for Ivorian Premier League side... Diab Diab these guys, ASL. Is it ASL? Is it ASL or I? I think that's an I. ASI. We're going to call them ASI from this point on. He's gone to ASI for a free transfer. He wasn't getting paid any money at us anyway. So yeah, he's left the club. He's getting paid a decent wage, actually. So uh, yeah, good luck, Serge. In between, then, we have played four more matches, and we've won all four of them. We started off with AS Denguele, a 4-1 victory here in the National Cup fifth round, setting up a quarter-final match. We were, we were, the goals were scored by Alonzi with two, Kuaku, Frank that is, and Bakary Kone, and then against Williamsville Athletic Club in the league, 2-0 here. Diallo and Zuzua with a penalty. Stella Club in the Ivorian League Cup quarter final, setting up a semi-final match. We win Vieira Torre and Serafin Aka with the goals here. And then Buake FC, 2-0 in this one. Alonzi and Zuzua once again. It means that we are currently top of the Ivorian Premier Division. Four points clear at the moment with a game in hand. So if we can beat SO Army in our next match, we will go... What is that? Seven points clear at the top of the table with 16 games played, which means with 10 games left, there's a big old gap to close. I'm not going to lie. I absolutely love some of the kits in this league. Like, our kits, 
we wear this green and red horizontal stripe thing, but our away kit is like red and white checkerboard, I think. The army kit there, I love that. That looks nice. A nice grey, black and orange kit. That's good. ASEC Mimosas have got a good kit. There's, there's some good kits in Africa. So then, we've got a little bit of an injury problem going on. So there are going to be a couple of new names in the squad. I say a couple. One. One new name, really, in the squad. It's going to be Kanate in goal. Our normal number one goalkeeper currently has the cold. Has the cold? Has the flu? Has a cold. One of those two. He's out for a few days. It's going to be Richie Kouaku, Emmanuel Traore, Serafin Aka, and Utara as our back four. We'll come back to Traore in a minute. Diara Suba, Zuzua, and Betty will be our central midfielders. It's Kone, Alozi, and Kofi as our... Our striker Stevens has returned. I think he's our second top scorer. So, Emmanuel Traore is rubbish. He is definitely rubbish, but he is young, and I want to try and evolve and develop this man. Evolve him, apparently, like a Pokemon. I want to develop him into a decent footballer. I think there's something there. My coaches think there's something there as well with the four-star potential ability. We've got injuries to our defenders, so Emmanuel's going to have to just take this chance, take it by the scruff of the neck, and actually put in a decent performance. Now, using the instant result button, which if you're not aware, that is what I'm doing for most of the matches, if not all of the matches in between the ones we're recording, we seem to have a ridiculous amount of shots. How is that a red card? I'm not going to complain. That definitely was not a red card offence. Very early on, then, army are down to 10. Like I was trying to say, we have a lot of shots when I use the instant result button. When we use the actual normal match engine, we still have a decent amount of shots, but nowhere near as many as we do with the instant result. I mean, in this one, we're nearly 40 minutes in, and we've yet to have a proper highlight so far. We've almost made it to half-time without a highlight, but we do finally have one, with 20 seconds left of injury time to play. Diara Suba finds Utara. Lovely spin back to the defence midfielder, Diara Suba. Now Bedia, the youngster. Zazua, lots of space, and he's bloody Tony Abode, hasn't he? Pakome Zazua with an absolute rocket from outside the area. Puts us 1-0 ahead against Army just before half-time. We go on top of the table by a country mile by the looks of it. So it is 1-0 at half time. I mean, the 10-man army thing, maybe that's the problem. Maybe that is what is going wrong here. Our strikers, I mean, Azodi, is, is, is Alozi. I will never get his name right. Get out there and show everyone what you're capable of. Be an angry man, and then everyone else can have a passionate. There's a lot more to come from you. Traore seems to be doing all right. He's on a 6.6, .6, which isn't, like, groundbreaking, but so is Aka, and he's actually supposed to be a decent centre-back. Just after the hour mark, we've got ourselves a corner. Alozi with the corner towards the front post. Not the best corner. It's, it's Kone. Edge of the area. Takes a few touches. Keeps going. Cuts inside. Goes for an effort. Curls it just over the bar, though. Still 1-0 to Africa Sports. Still players not performing very well. Alozi's going to come off. We're going to bring on Diallo. And then we're going to swap you two over. We're going to bring Coffee off as well for Vieira Torre. Or Vieira Traore, sorry. He's played a few games and scored a couple of goals, so I want to give him another chance. Army have had literally one shot, and it wasn't on target. We've had about 25. Zazua cuts towards goal into the penalty area. He's going to go across Diara Suba to Bedia, and the youngster's effort is just over the bar. The youngster saw his name up in lights there, didn't he? Traore's still on a 6.6 .6 at the moment. It's Kawaku with the ball. Richard Kawaku, who I want to call Richie Kawaku, keeps going into the penalty area, straight into Kone's head, apparently. Zazua and Diara Suba passing between the pair of them. The goal scorer, Zazua, goes for another long range effort, tries to curl it into the corner. That was actually a very good chance from Zazua. Let's give them one final get creative. We've had 35 shots, 14 on target, we're 1 0 up. 37 shots, 38 shots. What are we doing? We're not seeing, we've seen like four shots in the entire match. Kouadiou in goal for Army. Kicks it out. Long ball upfield is hopefully intercepted by Kouaku. Now Richie Kouaku can run forward. Plays it across. Diara Suba to Zazua. Long ball forward. Diallo with a flicked head. He's almost managed to find his way into the back of the net. Instead it goes wide. It's going to be a 1-0 victory then against Army. Although we've got 20 seconds left to play and a highlight. And if we know anything, we like to score goals with 20 seconds left to play in injury time. So hopefully something can come from this. Aka to Diara Suba. Back to Richie Kouaku. There's five seconds. Nothing's coming of this. There's there's no need for this highlight, is there? There's definitely no need. The full-time whistle is about to go. The full-time whistle does go. It's a 1-0 victory. We had 41 shots. 41 shots. How... I mean, can we see, like... Who, who did the shots? Can we see who did the shots? That's the thing, isn't it? We can do player ratings. That one. Africa Sports Stats. 
Who had all the shots? Attacking. There we go. Kone had 11 shots. Or was that 11 on target? No, he must have had just 11 in total. And only 36% were on target. We're having... We must be having really long range efforts. Maybe that's that's what's happening. Can we do... Can we find out these things? Shots. I mean, that's not what we, what we want at all. So that is what we were doing. Quite a lot of those shots were from well outside the area, aren't they? Quite a lot of them are from well outside the area. Blocked shots I'm not too interested in. Obviously, we scored the goals. So there's a lot of shots. I mean, they're, they're very central, but they're off target. And then a lot of shots that were saved, which they're a little bit closer in. Maybe we need to tell our team to stop taking so many long shots. Try and work the ball into the box a bit more for the next few matches. Well, ultimately, at the end of the day, we did what we needed to do. We won. Just. We won 1-0, but we won nonetheless. We picked up three more points. We're now top of the table. 39 points on the board. Second place, FC San Pedro on 32. So there is a huge gap between us and second. We are on our way towards the end of the season, actually. We've got a weird thing in April where we don't have any football. I don't understand that one. What we're going to do for the next episode, I think we're going to go probably for the big one once again, ASEC Mimosas, and we might do AFAD Jekanu. Possibly that's going to be the next episode. We might mix things up completely because there might be a National Cup final or an Ivorian League Cup final at some point. So I don't quite know how all of this is going to work. Basically, next episode, football will happen, and there'll be another episode of Season 1 where football will happen. That's what we're committing to. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2020 with Africa Sports in the Ivory Coast, where we are attempting to develop the Ivory Coast as a world-class footballing nation. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you are new here and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next time with more Football Manager with Africa Sports. And maybe we might have even secured the title by that point. That's genuinely a possibility.